morning, happy Friday, and happy pre-stream. This is the five minutes before I go live on my Adobe uh, Master Classes. And just wanted to welcome you all here for just my usual few minutes before I go live for a quick tip and just to say hello. And thank you for watching on my channels. Um, so today we're going to be taking a look at creative ways to share your photos. And uh, as usual, I like to share a quick tip before we go live on the, on the main Adobe channel. Uh, for those of you who are watching on my YouTube and my Facebook and so forth and so on. So welcome everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, glad to see you all here. And uh, let's get straight to the tip because we only have like, you know, three, four minutes. So I'm going to uh, switch over to my, uh, my computer here. And as you can see, I've got uh, Lightroom Classic open as I usually do when I'm working with my photos. Um, and th this is the best tip I can give you, especially for um, sharing your photos in creative ways. One of the, you, you've heard me harp on the fact that, you know, you want to use collections where, whenever possible, uh, as opposed to trying to maintain and organize everything in folders. Folders are great for where your photos actually are on your hard drive. But when it comes to organization for the, from the standpoint of sharing, from the standpoint of uh, and just enjoying your photos, collections work so much better. So for example, I created this collection a while ago. It's called A World Traveler. It's got 78 photos in it. And it's just from some of my favorite photos from my travels around the world. And, and of course, these exist in all different folders from, you know, when I went to Tokyo, when I went to Iceland, when I went to Utah. These photos all exist in their various folders. But if I want to see them all together, kind of like my favorite travel photos, then it's best to go ahead and put those in a collection. Now, another reason why you want to use collections, uh, if for no other reason, is that everything past the develop module, and I mean map, book, slideshow, print, I turned off web, but web as well. Um, but all of these modules after develop work best from collections. Now, you can still not have collections if you just, for whatever reason, are so adamant against it. But if you really want to enjoy these modules, like if you want to put together a slideshow, then it's best to go ahead and organize your images in a collection in the order you want your slideshow to be in. Then you're all set when it comes time to go make your slideshow because everything's already in the order you're telling your story in. Same thing for creating a book. I use the book module for my portfolio book. I have a hardcover portfolio. And I've, I've organized the images for my portfolio in a collection in the order I want them in. So collections are not only important just from your sanity, just from your state of mind and being able to organize and see things better, but also just from the standpoint of uh, when you go to these other modules, it'll be that much easier to work. So for example, even if you go to the print module, um, you might think, well, hey, if I'm just making a single print, then it doesn't really matter. And you're right. But if you're making a multiple up print, so let's say you're going to have six images up. Uh, hang on. Oh, wrong key. There we go. Then having those images in the order you want them in for your six up print Again, it's going to make your life that much easier. So keep in mind, collections are your friend. And they are definitely will be your friend when it comes to sharing your photos creatively. All right, I'm going to put you back in the lobby just for a minute. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We'll be back in less than 30 seconds. Friday, everyone. Happy Masterclass Friday, that is. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. Um, and of course, each week I focus more on the photography side of that title. Today, we're going to be taking a look at creative ways of sharing your photos, and we're going to hopefully get a bunch of different creative ways in. 
Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me once again on a Friday where we do master classes all day long on Fridays. Uh, so I, um, I, I used to say I was kicking things off, but I think Paul Tranny now kicks things off an hour before me with a, um, a, a, a graphic design master class. Uh, then I'm up for photography. Then we have the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. And then after that, I think Paul's back with a Photoshop master class. And then we have uh, Jason Levine doing uh, audio and video. And then we have um, Howard Pinsky doing uh, UI UX design and Kyle Webster doing drawing and artwork. So just a full day of master classes from the Adobe Evangelism team. Um, and you get to just participate for free. It doesn't cost you anything. You can always watch the replay if you can't stick around all day. So great to have you here. And I see a bunch of folks already in the chat. Uh, Chris Dahl, how you doing? Uh, Sam Peterson, Craig Myers, um, or Craig, I don't know if that Myers was your last name. I saw Myers in there too. Uh, Reverb Mike, Carolyn Brown, um, Ferry, uh, Murray, J.R. Flores, welcome everybody. And once again, I know there are different people watching. I see you on Twitter. I see you over there on YouTube and Facebook and all the various places where people may be watching this. And once again, it's great that you're watching it. You can hang out there and continue watching it, but I won't necessarily see your chat questions or I won't see what's going on in the chat because I only get to pay attention to this one chat during the stream. So if you want to participate in the chat, head over to bbe.net slash Adobe Live. And that's where you can use your Adobe ID and just uh, sign in. And then we'll see whatever you say in the chat. Like I'm seeing Stephen Booth and Creative Sense and Emma P and all these people coming in saying hi right now. So uh, that's the chat that I'm going to be looking at today. But again, you can hang out wherever you want to watch this. Um, just remember that I won't necessarily see when you put something in those other chats. All right, uh, so today's topic, without further ado, we're going to uh, continue talking about creative ways of sharing your photos, your photography, your best shots, your edited shots. So last week we did some portrait retouching, um, and, and, and it just as I was ending that topic, it made me think, okay, now that you've retouched your images, then what? You know, how do you share them? How do you get them out there for the world to see? How do you get them out there for your client to see? How do you get them out there for the for the um, person you retouch to see? And uh, and whether it's Photoshop or whether it's Lightroom, you can always just export a JPEG. That's uh, you know sharing 101. Export out a single image, but that's not going to be the most creative way to do it, especially if you have more than one. Um, so let's get into it. Let me show you some of the things I'm thinking of. And we're just going to just take it little by little until we ramp it all the way up and get through hopefully all of, if not most of my solutions. Rufus Dirchler's in the house. Uh, hey, Rufus, glad to see you here on a Friday morning. All right, so with that said, um, or Friday, I think it's Friday late afternoon, Rufus's time, but uh, gr glad to see him here. All right, so with that said, let me switch over to my desktop. I've got Lightroom Classic open. And one of the first tips I'm going to give you is that if you're going to share your images in a creative way from Lightroom Classic, then having them in a collection is just going to make your life so much easier. If you, if you, you know, for some reason, people just get bent on like, oh, I can just do everything in a folder. Yes, you can do everything in a folder to a point. Not everything anyway, but you can do a lot of things in a folder. But if you don't use collections and you only use folders, you're missing out on a lot. For example, I've got this collection called a World Traveler. It's got 78 photos in it. It's got 78 of my favorite photos that I've taken over the years around the world. So uh, back in the day when we used to travel and do in-person events, I got the benefit of traveling the world uh, for Adobe and capturing all these amazing scenes uh, from different countries, different parts of the world, and, and just having a blast. Now, some of these were my own personal vacations like Iceland, but for the most part, these were mostly business trips um, where I got a chance to capture all this. Now, for example, the ones in Paris, those are multiple trips to Paris. 
But those are likely, those Eiffel Tower shots are likely in a Paris folder somewhere for the year that I went to Paris. And just like the Egypt shots are probably in an Egypt folder somewhere just for when I went to Egypt. But if, if I just maintain the folders, then I would never see them together because if I move them from where they are in the folders, then I'm physically moving them and I wouldn't want that either. I want them to stay where they're supposed to be. So that's why I put them in a collection because I can put as many of these photos together in a collection the way I want them without ever moving them from their locations of where they exist on my hard drives. So that way they can stay in their various folders, but then put them in a collection. And more importantly, as we start to build these collections for the purpose of storytelling and sharing your photos, don't just put them in a collection, but start to put them in a collection in the story order that you want to tell. So for example, um, here's another collection. And, and this is a collection specifically for Iceland. And as you can see, I'm starting to tell a story. Okay, here's my, here's my equipment loadout. This is the stuff that I took to Iceland to do my shoot. Then this is Scott. Uh, Scott Kelby and I were on a plane headed to Iceland. And then we get to Iceland and Scott sets up and starts taking his first pictures. And so I'm not just putting the images that I want to use for the story in a collection, but I'm also putting them in the order that I would want the men to tell that story. So it's not just throw a bunch of photos in a collection and then randomly do something. It's put them in a collection to tell the story that you want to tell. And then it just goes on and on and on from there. All right. So now uh, let's go back to that. Um, that world traveler one. And now that we got the world traveler one up, you notice that um, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic has these modules. It has a library, which we spend the bulk of our time in. It, um, it has the develop module, which is what we use, you know, week to week to edit the photos and, and to, to correct them and make them look better. But then everything after that, so map, book, slideshow, print, and web, which I've turned off. All of those other modules, are for what we're talked about, for storytelling, for sharing your, your images. Um, and if you have a collection already built with them in that order, this is just gonna be that much easier to tell the story. So for example, if you're gonna make a print book, a photo book, whether it's print or PDF, however you're gonna export it out. But if you're gonna make a book, then it'd be a lot easier to make the book if the images were already in the order that you wanted them in the book. So for example, if you were doing a wedding book, if you were doing a graduation book, if you were doing any kind of book to tell a story, then you would probably start putting the images in the order first before you even go to the book module. Because then once you go to the book module, your book will be laid out automatically. Uh, here, if I go to the book module just for, just for giggles here, and I were to create, um, this is not the book I want. Let's go in and create clear layout, auto layout. There we go. I'm not even sure where it's getting, getting this collection from. This is not the one I want. Clear layout. Uh, 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 hang on. Hold on for a minute. It's grabbing them from a different collection. Sorry about that. All right, let's grab all of these. And let's tell it to use. There we go. If I tell it to lay out a book automatically, then it's going to lay them out from the collection in the order that I did. Now, the auto layout is my least favorite because it just puts one picture on every page. And chances are I wouldn't want my book to look like that. I would actually start laying out multiple images on, on multiple pages and so forth and so on. But um, once they're in the order you want them in, then it's that much easier to rearrange them and put them in the order that you wanted them in for the purpose of your book, so forth and so on. All right, so that's, that's my story about collections. Now, back to the collection for a second. One of the first ways you can share once you have your collection is you can actually make your collection public. In the upper right-hand corner um, of each collection, there is a Make Public button. And when I make the collection public, it will generate a custom URL for you specifically for that collection and nothing else. 
And so no one's going to be able to see all the rest of your photos. No one's going to be able to see, you know, whatever photos aren't in that collection once you hand out that URL. So one of the first, just if you don't do anything else, put your images in a collection and make that collection public, get that URL and share that URL with whoever you want to be able to see it. Once you go online to lightroom.adobe.com, then you can go in and you can customize what people can do with those images, whether they can download JPEGs or not, whether they can see the locations where the images were shot or not, whether they can um, add you know, likes or comments or not. You can control all of that from the URL that gets generated. But um, if you don't do anything else, but just simply make public, and it's taken a second to generate that for whatever reason, but if you don't do anything else, it'll just make a URL. You can copy that URL right from here once it's done, and then you can share that URL out, and people will have a just a simple online slideshow to be able to, to click. Uh, the collection must be synced to the cloud, yes. Um, so, and that's another thing too, if you look over here to the left of my collections, uh, over here on the left, you notice that there's the little lightning bolt next to the World Traveler one. It's still syncing, looks like, syncing nine photos. But those collections do need to be synced in order for you to make them public, because otherwise, how would you make them public if they're, never, if they're not in the cloud to begin with? So you would make it uh, public, or put in a, sync it to the cloud first, then make it public, that will generate a URL for you. And then once that URL is generated, uh, people will then be able to, um, you'll be able to share your URL to whoever you want to be able to see those photos. All right, uh, let me go, let me try a different one here. I don't know why that one was taking so long. I'm just gonna see if this one will work faster. And obviously if you're using um, Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, uh, all of your albums are already in the cloud, so you could just go and share them right from Lightroom. You don't have to, um, <clears throat> there's no syncing them first and then making it public. You're, they're already in the cloud, so it's just a matter of making them public. All right, <clears throat> next up, let's, uh, I'm not going to wait for it. If it pops up, it pops up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, that one just turned off for some reason. All right, not sure why my, my generating URLs aren't, aren't happening as quickly as they should. It usually takes like a second, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. All right, so uh, speaking of creative ways of sharing your photos, an album isn't necessarily all that creative. It's just a, it's just a way to quickly get a bunch of photos shared um, to a client or to, um, to whoever you want to be able to see them. The next way we're gonna talk about is actually the slideshow. Now the slideshow module, I'll be the first to admit, it's not one that I use on a regular basis much anymore. Uh, back in the day, I was really a big slideshow fan because what it let me do was take images in an album like this or in a collection like this, and then create a full-blown slideshow um, video. So for example, you'll notice that uh, I can click through the slideshow. I have all the various images in there and they're coming up one by one. But then you'll notice on the right-hand side, I've got a bunch of controls over how this slideshow will look. And on the left-hand side, you've got a template browser for various built-in templates for how you want your slideshow to look, as opposed to your own custom templates, which you can make as well. So I even have one back from the Twitch days. All right, but anyway, um, if I don't do anything, if I just pick, let's say, uh, let's just use their simple template. If I don't do anything and I just hit play, it'll prepare the slideshow. It'll quickly look at all the images there first, so it has to just make sure they're all previewable. And then it will start to play the slideshow. Now, I don't know if you probably can't really hear it that well, but there's some music going on in the background because I've got this, I, I added music to one of the previous slideshows, so it still remembers that setting. But that's just it. It's just fading between the photos and playing it to music. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it now because we want to do a few more things. So if all I wanted was a simple slideshow, images in a collection, any order I want, simple slideshow, template, done. But if I want more, 
For example, you'll notice that you have the option, let's scroll down here, you have the option for pan and zoom. So pan and zoom near the bottom here in the, in the playback settings. That will allow you to have like that Ken Burns effect where the images are, are fading in and out from each other, but they're also moving. So you have a slider here from low to high as far as the amount of movement. I'm going to bump it up a bit. And then we're just going to preview it again from here. And we'll let that cook for a second. And now you see that bridge coming in towards you ever so subtly. And you see the London eye moving you know, outward and to the left a little bit. And the turning torso is kind of bringing its way into us. So that's just a simple pan and zoom. All right, let's stop that. Now you also notice, like I said, I added a song. So under the music category, you can add multiple tracks. Uh, this is actually just a YouTube uh, royalty-free song, so I can not have to worry about YouTube screaming at me for having this music in my video. But um, you can um, not only add as many tracks as you want, as different songs as you want, but you can also sync the slides to the music. So as opposed to them playing for a set time, like four seconds, three seconds, whatever, you can say sync the whole thing to the, tr to the soundtrack. So... If this is a five minute song, it's gonna be a five minute slideshow. That's good and bad, because if you only have a few images, then that means the images are gonna stay on screen for a long time, because it's gonna sp spread them out, basically make them stay on screen longer in order to play them all back. So syncing, if, if you're gonna sync it to the music, just make sure you have a decent amount of images to match the length of the song. 78 is probably not enough for a five minute track. That's gonna take forever, um, but it will, it will do it. Okay, next up, you can also add in some, some graphics. So you can add in your, an intro screen with your identity plate, um, and we can scale that up a bit. There we go. So there's my identity plate, and I'm saying, play that at the very beginning of the slideshow. And I can also play the same thing at the um, end of the slideshow, play my identity plate at the end. You can, um, you can specify the background color. Right now the backdrop's just a color wash, it's black, you could do gradients. You can even have a background image. So if you had like just a, a nice image that you wanted faded in the background, you can do that as well. So um, the slideshow has really come a long way over the years. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of attention anymore because people just, you know, uh, the, the Lightroom team has been more focused on performance than anything else since that's what everybody cares about most. But it's just nice to know that we got these features. Um, repeat slideshow is on by default. Turn that off because, you know, once your slideshow finishes, you want it to just finish. You don't want it to just keep going over and over, over and over again. And random order... Um, that goes against everything I said earlier, because typically you're putting your images in a collection in the order you want them in. So why would you want to all of a sudden then play the slideshow randomly? You probably want them to play in the order that you spent putting them in in the first place. Now, once you're, once you're happy with this, so I've got one called, uh, I got a template called Terry White Photography. But once you're, once you're happy with all your settings that you've done, then you go over to the template browser and you can create a new template for the name of your slideshow settings and put them in the user templates. And that way you won't ever have to set it up again. So then if I come over here to Terry White Photography, that's the one that puts my name at the bottom of the slideshow. If I were to preview it now, there we go. it's looking for a missing song that I don't have in there anymore, but um, I need to update it without that song there. But then it will just go ahead and play it without the song. Ah, and it's synced to music that doesn't exist, so that's not going to work. All right, let's, let's back up a little bit. There we go. All right, let's stop and play it one more time. Yep, I know, I know, I know the music is complaining. Hey, you saved this with a particular song. Where is that song? 
There we go. Okay, so then it's just fading between those. It's got a, I put a white border around the images. Um, so the pan and zoom is happening within that frame. Uh, and then it's just got my identity plate at the bottom of it. Now, once you're happy with your slideshow, you like the way it looks, now time to share it. Now, if you were, in, if you were back in the days in, in, front of, um, <clears throat> in front of a live audience, you could then connect your computer up to a projector, hit play, and they see it. But we're, we're not there yet. We're not back in the days of a big audience in front of us. So what you can then do is over here on the bottom left-hand side, once your slide shows exactly the way you want it, there's an export video button right behind my head. So I hit export video, and then you can specify um, your video setting. So 720p, 1080p uh, HD, um, it's going to be a 16 by 9 slideshow. I give it a name, tell it where to put it, uh, out on my desktop maybe, and call it my um, World Traveler slideshow. And then once I export that out, um, that will give me a video that I can do whatever I want to do with it. I can put it on YouTube, put it on my social media, put it, send it to a client. Um, however, I want to share that video out. Put it on Instagram, wherever you want to put it. That's going to give you the video that you just created from all your images, including the music tracks, including everything, and your, your video's ready to go at that point. Okay, um, so slideshows are awesome ways of adding a little pizzazz to your still images. And if you do have videos, they can be in your slideshows as well, and your videos will play just like the picture does, but it'll play with the audio and the video. So it'll still, still, still video. Video plays, says whatever it says. Um, hear people talking, maybe it's a talking head, whatever it is, and then goes back to the still, still, stills and the music. So lots of ways to create a nice um, slideshow built right into Lightroom Classic. All right, I'm gonna bounce back out to the grid for a minute. And then I'm gonna head, head over to um, one of the modules that people take for granted because if you're not doing your own printing, then chances are you don't spend a lot of time in a print module. But the print module is one of my favorite ways for creatively sharing photos right out of Lightroom Classic without me having to print them at all. Because you don't have to necessarily have a printer in order to use the print module. When I go to print, and let's just go up to one of the default templates and show you where I'm going to start. All right, so um, I've got a photo selected, and I've got an 8 by 10 template selected. And if I select a different photo, it automatically flips it tall uh, so that it would print properly. And, and, and this, is, this is great for printing. So hey, I want to print 8 by 10s, and I want them to just print and be on a piece of paper. Awesome. But... If you notice some of these layouts, even the ones that are built in, there's two up greeting card, there's um, contact sheets, there's fine art matte print. There are all these different prints, trip, triptych. There's all these different um, layouts for printing your photos in different ways. And again, don't get stuck on the word print. We're gonna get past that in just a minute. Once I saw that, I was like, well, hell, I don't have to be limited to their layouts because just like you create your own templates for the slideshow, you can create your own templates for the print module. So, for example, I have a series of my own uh, print templates called Terry White Print Templates. And if I were to go to the, um, let's just do a three up wide. There's a three up wide. So it's showing the three photos I've got selected in a wide format with my identity plate at the bottom with a black background. And again, if I wanted three different photos, just select three different photos. And now those become the ones. If I want them, in, if I, for whatever reason, wanted them in a different order, I could still move them around. Oh, I can't move them around here. I can move them in the frame there. I'd have to move them around in the collection to do that, but you can still move them around and get them in the order you want them in. So, for example, if I were doing just a quick New York layout, there's a quick New, New York layout with Freedom Tower, Statue of Liberty, um, Brooklyn Bridge, 
and it's all ready to go. Now, like I said, this doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a printer because if you scroll down to the bottom, there is a, um, there's the ability to send it to your printer. If you have a printer, great, you're all set. But I use it 99% of the time to send it to a JPEG file. I would say even 100% of the time because I don't have my own photo printer anymore. I gave up my own photo printer back in 2014. So I haven't used my own photo printer since then. So I'll put it to a JPEG and um, you, can, you can set the resolution that you want it to be. You can even use print sharpening if you want. And you can tell it if you were going to use media, if you're going to have it printed, what media is going to be printed on. But more importantly, if I just go ahead and print that to a file, I give it a name. Um, so we'll call it um, Masterclass Print. And we'll save it to the desktop. And now Lightroom is generating a print from this layout in the background. So you can set these up and queue these up as many as you want. And it will just, like it does for all background processes, it will just do that in the background and just do its thing. All right, so it looks like it's just about done. It's done now. So if I were to go out to my desktop and go to my desktop here and there we go, Masterclass Print. There it is. So that's the print. That's the JPEG now. I can do whatever I want to do with it. And set, put that on, on social media, share it with a client, whatever I want to do. Um, <laughs> six years without a printer, that could be a movie. All right, so you're, you're only limited by your imagination when it comes to the print module, uh, what you want to do and how you want to design things. So, for example, let's select a, a few more photos here. Uh, there's a six up wide that I'm not really crazy about because it's got that identity plate in the background, so I would probably turn that off. Uh, or at least um, scale it down. There we go. Let's make that a lot smaller. And yeah, I'd probably turn that one off for this case, but that's a six up layout. Let's see what else I've got in my, my bailiwig. All right, um, three up square. Three up tall, four up eight by 10, four up 16 by 20. Now these are different page sizes because some of these I did have printed back in the day. Uh, let's see, four up wide. So that's same concept of what we just did, but four instead of three. Oh, I have a nine up for some reason. Let's select nine photos so we get them. So you can create some really interesting prints or JPEGs based on the design you create for your layout here in the print module. And again, uh, if, you, if, there, if the image is not quite filling the frame you want, you still have the freedom to move it around. I wouldn't want the Statue of Liberty to be cut off, so I'm just going to move her down. Uh, same thing for the, um, for the Golden Gate Bridge. Move that down. Move these churches up and down. Uh, move the Brooklyn Bridge over a little bit more. And so then if this were the layout that I was happy with, away I go and I export it out. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at the Walmart back and forth. Well, okay, so um, I, I, do, I do have prints made. I just don't print them myself. So one of my favorite print places actually is Costco. Costco has done an amazing job of printing for me for, God, it's got to be 10 years now. So Costco is my secret weapon for having prints, having big prints done, metal prints, canvas prints, acrylic prints, paper prints. Um, they just do a great job. And you can even download their color profiles if you want and um, really get the color exactly the way you want it as well. Okay, um, and, and you know, you might want just something simple like a square on a, on a nice big um, uh, white background to be, to be um, printed and framed. Framed was the word I was looking for. Now, let's say you, let's say you start it with something like this. Well, uh, what, I, what I'm not crazy about is I'm not crazy. I, I do like the white background, but I'm not crazy about that it's just the image sitting on the white. So you can go in with a stroke border 
And if we make that stroke border nice and thick, we'll be able to see it. And you can also make it whatever color you want. So for example, if I zoom in on that, that's putting a nice gray border around the photo. Now, if I don't like gray, I can go ahead and make that whatever, um, whatever shade of color I want or shade of gray. I was just joking there. Uh, let's say I want it black instead. And there we go. So that's, that's too thick of a border, but it's putting a nice black border around the image. Just kind of make it stand out from the page a little bit more. All right, next up. Um, oh no, someone says Costco's closing their photo centers announced two weeks ago. That is, that is very disappointing to hear. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, I gotta shake that off. That's, uh, Costco was my, like I said, my secret weapon for about a decade. All right, back, back to where I was. Okay, anyway, uh, create these layouts, save them, um, do what you will with them and use them over and over again. And like I said, you can always print to a file and then do whatever you want with that file, whether it's share it or have that file printed if you don't have your own printer. All right, next up. So we talked about the ways, the creative ways of doing it right in Lightroom Classic. Now let's move out of Lightroom we're still going to use the images from Lightroom, but let's move out of Lightroom and talk about one of the ways of, of creating um, interesting uh, creative ways of sharing your photos that aren't relying just on Lightroom Classic. I would be remiss if I didn't talk at least for a few minutes about Photoshop. So let me bounce over to Photoshop. Oop, I don't even have it open yet. Hang on. Let's launch Photoshop. All right, and now that I got Photoshop open, let's go ahead and go to new. And one of the um, one of the things you can do besides creating a new document any size you want is you'll notice at the very top of the new dialog box, you've got these categories, photo, print, art and illustration, web, mobile, film, video. These are categories for stock templates. I know when people hear the word stock, they kind of freak out because stock usually means I got to pay some money. But these templates, the vast majority of them are free. They're, they're included in your Lightroom, or I'm sorry, included in your, um, your membership. So if you've got access to Photoshop, you've got access to the free templates. So for example, if I were to just click on photo, now it's going to show me a bunch of templates with check marks. These are ones I've already downloaded. But the ones that don't have check marks yet are the ones I have not downloaded. And if I want to find more, I can just type in what I'm looking for, hit go, and it will take me to the web to find what I'm looking to find what the category I'm looking for. Because uh, these are just a few samples. You may not see the one you really want here. So you could always search and say, for example, maybe I am looking for a, let's just say wedding uh, template. And if I hit go, I see my browser pop up on the other screen here. And um, here are the, uh, here are uh, uh, like hundreds of templates for weddings and, and all kinds of things. So Valentine's is coming up as well. So um, you're not just limited to those templates that show up in Photoshop. There are 300 and, or 202 results in wedding templates alone. Um, and that was just one keyword search. You could search for different keywords for different reasons. Now, once you um, once you kind of see one you want, and these are a lot of greeting cards and and wedding announcements and things like that. Um, if you see one you like, you can license it. If there was a cost involved, it would tell you. If there's no cost involved, it'll do just what it just did. It just downloaded it. And then I can, uh, oh, hang on. I'd have to go open it from Photoshop. Hang on. I can't do it while this is open. Let's go open and go to downloads. And there it is. And there's the, the, the template that I order opened um, with its instructions. It looks, is that the one I did? I don't even see which one it was anymore. 
I thought it looked more interesting than that. But anyway, there's the template. So I, that's not what I want. Let's go ahead and close that one. Let's do new one more time. Let's do photo and let's do it from within the window. Let's say that you see one you like here. Here's a um, wooden photo frame for free. Uh, first of all, you can see a preview of it. You can see what it looks like. Oh, I kind of like that. That, that looks kind of interesting. Again, creative ways of sharing your photos. I can then download it. That will download this one right into Photoshop. So I won't have to go look for it in my downloads folder. Okay, I can see the download. And then I can just hit open right here. And that's it. It's open. It's ready to go. So now it's just showing me all the places where I would put my own images. Your image here, your image there. So it needs four photos in order for this template to work the way it's designed. Um, if there is like you, do, is there one you don't need? They're all separated by layers, so you could turn one on or off. Um, you can. I just want to see what's in in these different. Gotcha. All right, so yeah, you just go to the frames one. Yep, and each one's there laid out. And then you would just bring your images in. So for example, let me open up one of my images. And I could open it directly from Lightroom into Photoshop as well. I'll open up this one. All right, once I got it open, I could either copy or paste it or drag it and drop it into that layout. And then I would have to position it where I want it to be. I want it to be in the large horizontal frame area. And they usually give you a place where it says your image here. So you can either replace that smart object with your image or place it near that smart object and that way your image will be ready to go. So I need to scale it down, obviously, to fit. So something like that. Now this image um, also probably has some treatments done to it to kind of make it a little darker because I can notice a little darker than my image. But you can uh, go and tweak those things. Uh, for example, it's got an inner shadow on it. It's got a reflection. So if you wanted to turn some of those things off, you could. Um, but that's the way the frames would work. That's the way it's given. It's um, designed to work in this case. So just replace all the other three spots with your images and then export this out. And you've got your creative frames of your images ready to go and share however you want. And again, it just, it, I, I would have never put this together. I would have never put these four frames together on my own and these sticks or these you know, tree, little tree limbs or whatever behind it in different paint colors. I just would have never created that on my own. But in two seconds, I'm able to get a template from Photoshop and just replace it with my own work and use it. And again, if I, there are parts of it that I don't want, I can change them. Um, delete them, remove them. If I only wanted one of these frames, I could turn the other three off and add my own text there, for example. So again, you're, you're only limited by what you want in your creativity when it comes to these templates. You're, you don't have to, uh, you, like for example, you might be saying, well, I don't have four images, I only have two. Then, then don't use all four. <laughs> That's why they're all separated out as layers. You could turn off the two, the two you don't need and then just use the two that you have and um, put whatever else or leave that space blank. That's okay. You don't have to fill in every inch of the photo. So lots of ways to just do this stuff right in Photoshop. So let's do one more. Um, now I did that under photo. You have print, art, illustration, web, mobile, film, and video. So let's do art, illustration. And a lot of these are designed to, to be more artistic. So, um, I'm just not seeing one here that I really want to use. But, okay, let's say the Urban Mural Wall. It's telling me it's over 100 megabytes. I'm okay with that. All right. 
let's go ahead and open that up. And I've got a mural wall behind me now to do whatever I want. And again, this is all separated out as layers. So um, you can feel free to fill that wall with whatever you want. So if you had your own uh, illustration, your own photo that you wanted to kind of be behind that stuff, you can put it behind that stuff. Um, so it says your, and it looks like your artwork here. So um, I said that this was a smart object. If I double click on this, this is showing me what the smart object is. If I replace this area right now with my artwork and then close it and save it, it will update the smart object. So let's do that. Let's go back to Lightroom. And let's say that I wanted to do, use uh, the Eiffel Tower. All right, so we'll edit that in Photoshop. Command E, uh, edit a copy. All right, there it is. And now keep in mind that gray rectangle is just sitting there. So if I go to that gray rectangle and put my photo on it, scale it down. More interested in seeing the top than I am the bottom. There we go. Let's say it's not going to fit perfectly without cropping it, but let's say we use that. And then, because um, keep in mind, I open up that smart object. If I now close that smart object and save it, that's what it does. Because it's basically already got some, some um, uh, blend modes and things applied to it to make it look like that behind that bike on that steel graded uh, door. So just adding my photo to the smart object, I'm able to quickly replace the look and feel of the template with my own artwork, my own photo. Now, uh, to me, the bike's more of a distraction now, but you get the idea. And I guess I could go Photoshop the bike out if I had to, if the bike's not completely on its own layer. Uh, looks like it's not. But uh, I'm sure I could get the bike out of there if I really had to get it out of there. So you, you get the idea that um, these templates are just easy to use and, and replace and put your own work and share your work in ways that you just would not have thought of um, just by the shot that you took and then you just export the shot out. When you can do so many more things with it, with the templates that are built in um, that come with Photoshop as part of your subscription. All right, one more way to share your, your um, one more creative way to share your photography, your photos, is to take advantage of Adobe Spark. Now, Spark is, it comes in multiple um, forms, and it also has multiple applications. So on iOS, so iPhone, iPad, you've got Spark Page, Spark Post, and Spark Video. On the web, You've got Spark Page, Spark Post, Spark Video. So even if you don't have an iOS device and you have a web browser on your computer, you can still, um, oh, thank you, bicycle top layer, didn't see it, there we go. You've got the idea to, or, I'm sorry, you got the ability to just use Spark um, and so much better without the bike. Uh, you, you got the ability to use Spark even if you don't have an iOS device. So you can use it directly on your um, on web browser on your computer. So if I head over to my browser and I go to the other tab that I already had open, uh, I've already went to Spark and I've already logged in. So this is what it shows me. It says, Terry, tell, tell your story with Spark. And lets me create, um, it's, it's not even so much designating um, page, post, video. It's just saying, hey, what do you want to create? Want to create an Instagram story? Well, that's going to be a Spark post, but it's... It's not making me think about what each one's for. It's just saying, hey, what do you want to create? And then away I go. And so some of these are Spark pages. Some of these are posts. Some of these are videos. But it's just letting me decide based on what I want to create. And like I said, it's also an iOS app. So, for example, uh, let's go bring my phone over. 
All right, so there's my iPhone, and I'm going to go into uh, my Adobe folder. In my Adobe folder, those are the three apps down the center column there. Spark Posts, Spark Page, Spark Video. And if I were to now um, just go ahead. Oh, hang on, I want to get rid of this. There we go. I go to Spark Post, and it's showing me, just like Photoshop kind of did when I said new, showing me a huge number of templates. And these templates are constantly, um, we're constantly getting new templates. So um, what, what you see today is probably not what's going to be there in two days from now because it just, they're always adding more templates. If you're like overwhelmed by the template view, you can go by category. So you can go by seasonal, lifestyle, business, school, travel, or, or worst case scenario, I don't know. I can just go ahead and say search and search for whatever it is I'm looking for. So a lot of times I'm using Spark to create uh, YouTube thumbnails. So if I go YouTube um, thumbnail and done, then it just gives me a bunch of templates that are already set up in the right format, in the right layout, to make a great YouTube thumbnail. And I can just pick the one I want and customize it. Now, we're not going to do a YouTube thumbnail, but just to know that I, it just takes so much work out of it having to think about a blank page from scratch and then making my thumbnail. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. I'm just going to use one of the templates that's already here. I kind of like this fresh template in the bottom left. I'm going to tap on fresh. Now, when you tap on a template, it just brings it up full screen so you can see if this is what you really want to use or not. And um, I'm going to say, yeah, remix this template. It's one I really want to use. So now when I remix it, it's there with all the template content, um, some vegetables that I'm not ready to look at right now. And of course, um, uh, the, the text and everything that was already there and Vanessa Diagraph, who I don't know her, but whatever. Uh, so I start at the top. I don't want to have the word fresh. I want to have something different. Double tap, and that brings up the text, and I can type in whatever I want. Um, so I'm going to just do World Traveler. All right, done. All right, and it's now it's too big because she just had a simple word, whoever did this, had a simple word, fresh, and now I've created one that's much bigger than that with multiple, multiple words. So I can scale it just like that. So I can scale it down, make it one line or two just by how, how far I drag in or out on it. But I can pick it up, position it, and I get smart guys to let me know that it's now centered again. Okay, great. Next thing is, uh, well, it's not, not my name's not Vanessa, so I'm going to double click and go to the end there and change that to Terry White. You get bonus points for spelling your name correctly. All right, done. Now, last but not least, uh, well, not last, but one of the things I want to do, obviously, is change the photo. Now, the photo that came with it is a stock photo. If you really want to use it, you could. But obviously, you want to be doing this to be sharing your own images. So I would tap on this, and you notice that I can hit replace in the lower left corner. So I hit replace. And then it gives me all the places that I could replace this photo from. Most important to me is at the very bottom, it says Lightroom. So any collections you've synced to the cloud in Lightroom Classic are there. And of course, all your albums from Lightroom are there if you're using Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic. So if I go Lightroom, it's going to start showing me those albums, including a world traveler. So there's a world traveler with all my photos in it and um, and away we go. So I could go in and I could pick so many different places I've been, so many places I like to see. Uh, I don't know, I'm having a hard time deciding. We want something vertical. I want something good. Kind of already did the Eiffel Tower. Let's do something else. All right. How about... Oh, come on, Terry. Oh, Big Ben. There we go. 
All right, so we got Big Ben in there now. And um, now, that's just using the existing stuff. What if I want to add something else that isn't already there? Because I've already changed everything except for the color of the beige at the bottom. Um, but I've already changed everything in the template. I already changed... Um, and I, now <laughs> I have a different time thing. I want to say something else. It's time. There we go. It's time. All right, done. Okay, so now I've got the text changed, but, and I've used everything that's there, but that doesn't mean I can't add something new. So if I tap out of this and tap out of it again, I can tap add, and you can add another image. You can float another image, move another image around, do whatever you want. Add video. Add text, add an icon, add a sticker, add a logo. So I'm going to add an icon. And I'm not going to add a party icon. Cancel that. Hang on one more. Icon, there we go. And I'm going to just get <laughs> singer. I'm going to add Instagram. I, I want an Instagram logo, but I don't have one. So, it's got a ton. These are all just built-in stickers I can use. All the various forms of Instagram logos that have come and go, gone through the years. So I'm going to use the first one. Great. So, add that one uh, icon. Now, you might be wondering, well, why did it pick that color? Because it's using the original color from the original photo to colorize the whole template. So, that's where it's getting that orange from. And, of course, you can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to scale it down, pick it up, move it, scale it down some more, and I'm going to rotate it. So I got that little rotation icon. I'm going to rotate it uh, 90 degrees and stick it on its side. And then I'm going to move it down. And then I'm going to add one more thing, my uh, obviously my Instagram handle. So let's add some text. And let's just go ahead and make it at... Terry Lee White. Done. And my text came in there and it needs to be rotated. So I'm just going to turn that as well. And pick it up, move it over. And uh, it, it's, it's there. I, I probably want to make it a little smaller. So I go to size. I could scale it down. Just like that. And then pick it up and move it over. But also, maybe I want to change the way it looks, too. So one of my favorite things in here is the style wheel. So when I go to style, that says, I don't like what I see necessarily. I'm not crazy about it. But I don't know what I want yet, either. So the style lets me just keep turning it until I see something I like and then stop. So if I turn the style wheel while I've got that text selected, it just keeps changing it until I see something I like, including adding um, borders behind it or whatever. I kind of like that. I can keep going now. Yeah, I kind of like the bold look of that. I move that down, and away I go. And the style wheel can be used on just about anything. So you could style other text, style your photos, style whatever. Now, this is ready to go for, from, from a social media standpoint, post or text or whatever you want. You would just hit the share button in the upper right hand corner, export it out as a solid color in this case, and save it to your camera roll or share it on straight to social media. But what if you wanted to make it a story? So think about it this way. Um, Instagram kind of was like one of the first ones to start these stories where it's just a temporary thing, 24 hours, and it's a vertical format and so forth and so on. But now everybody's got it. Twitter's got it. Uh, LinkedIn's got it. Everybody's got this story format. Facebook's got it. Uh, so if I wanted this to be in the right story format, then I would also want to go in and resize it. So I could go in and see all my social media post sizes including Instagram story. Now, this doesn't make sense to share on Instagram because I'm already giving my Instagram handle there. But if I were to uh, just tap Instagram story, it's already resized it to the exact size of a story for all my social media platforms. So I could just now go in and export this out. Oh, I didn't need to be transparent, but anyway, save that out. 
and save it as uh, to the camera roll and now it's ready to share on any platform from in, for any story. So you've got a ton of possibilities to share beyond just your images. Now, if I had time, I would go into Spark Page and Spark Page is where you go in and you actually uh, designate an entire web page to your story with multiple images, multiple text. Um, here, I think I've got one. It's just easier to show you one here. Uh, I created this one in amount of time, but I created this one um, for my last conference just to go over all the various gear that I talked about and the photos I took with that gear. And um, this is a Spark page. So it's a one web page with one URL with all the images and text you put in it, the links you put in it that you could share out on social media. So with that said, I'm out of time, everyone. Thank you for being here. And we will catch you on the next one. Next up, I believe, is the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Bye, everybody.